tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. Satnam everyone. My name is Reverend Reg and I'm here again for Practical Magic where we talk about the latest in metaphysics, the law of attraction, science, and spirituality. So our topic for today is, you know, utilizing spiritual tools for unchanging times. Especially, I'm getting a lot of feedback how people are trying to manage the situation right now in their personal lives and their professional lives as well. So I'm very excited uh, for our topic for today, especially our guest is someone whom I look up to in terms of metaphysics and how to actually use it in our day-to-day -day lives. But so today, I'm very happy to share with all of you. Our guest for today is the Jennifer Hill, who's the author of two books, Stop Hoping, Start Hunting, a job seeker's guide to finding a dream job and 101 spiritual tools for uncertain times and jennifer hill actually created staffing services incorporated and sold it to markham search llc and at the same time she published two white papers the changing role of law firm leadership and the changing role of the legal secretary hosted a 10-part series with Dr. Deepak Chopra and Don Hoffman called Conversations at the Intersection of Cutting Edge, Science and Spirituality, hosted world leaders for a 52-part series teaching people how to meditate around the world called the Coalition for Global Unity, raised money for and built two schools in third world countries, Nepal in 2017 and Senegal in 2019, raised over $100,000 for leukemia in Lymphoma Society and other charities over the past 20 years and Shave My Head in honor of a little boy fighting cancer, appeared on numerous TV and radio shows as well as hosted shows both internationally and locally in the U.S. Appearances include Fox News, E! News, NBC, ABC and many others, hosted a radio show called Get Yourself the Job for over four years on LA Radio. LA Talk Radio. The things I would love to okay. write. Anyway, um, since she's very accomplished, I also want to share that I'm very grateful that she's spending time with us uh, right now because I'm very happy actually and I'm raving about the idea that she's putting people together around the globe for this coalition for global unity for people to come into coherence. So, Hi, Jen. Uh, I want to thank you first and foremost for the beautiful work that you're doing so that a lot of people can come into personal coherence and we can build a community where our uh, social and global coherence is actually attainable. So thank you so much for doing what you're doing. Mm. Thank you so much for joining us and having me here today. Thank you to everybody who's tuning in from wherever and whenever in the world you are. And it is such a deep honor and privilege to get to join you today. I'm so thankful that this opportunity arose for us to collaborate. I know you joined me on one of my shows uh, back about six months ago on Awake TV, and we just immediately had synergy. And you've introduced me to so many wonderful speech, uh, spiritual teachers. It's such a pleasure to be here. Yes, thank you so much. And actually, I'm also very happy because, Jen, what you did is extraordinary. Because uh, for one thing, you're fulfilling your personal goal. But at the same time, you're also paving the way for other teachers to gain more uh, followers about the wonderful work that they're doing as well. So it's a win-win situation for everyone. And that's something that I truly admire about you. If there's something I could share with everybody out there, when you go through a hard time, remember to be certain. You, you might not know how in that moment, but the idea is to have certainty that God, Jesus, they have your back and that whatever trials, tribulations, just much like Job, I love the book of Job in the Bible, talks about whenever anything happened, Job didn't say, oh, this is happening to me. 
Job knew it was happening for him, knew that it was strengthening him. And just like the wind with the tree, Job was able to come back 10 times stronger. There are so many examples of this, even Joseph in the Bible with his brothers when he was taken. The things that sometimes seem like they're causing us harm or that we're being victimized by are actually the things that are causing our roots to go really deep so we can grow twice as tall. Thank you so much for sharing that. I love the way you talk about it because it's amazing how we're actually putting a story in that particular experience because I realized that it's so important to have a higher perspective about things, especially the thing that you talked about, about having mentors and about having uh, that idea that you're developing strength during tough times. It's so important to put that in your consciousness so that you don't actually uh, go into the blame and complaining pattern. And it's so important because I realize now how important it is to have mentors because in the past, when I didn't have a mentor to confide with, especially when I was going through a tough time, my friends would lovingly comfort me, but at the same time, they also had this feeling of fear and doubt whether I was going to make it during the tough times that I experienced. But having a mentor actually helps you emerge more beautifully from the experience. Now, and they say, oh, you're such a good person. You did all of this. And <laughs> were about six to seven years where I caused harm. I was uh, selfish. I took things I wanted to receive just for the self alone. And it took my teachers and my mentors, actually one of my favorite spiritual centers that anybody can stream live on Sundays is called agapelive.com, Agape International. I had yes. not been that to a church. I went to church of my own volition until I was 14. I would go to Christian church, Catholic church. And then I became a teenager and I became... Uh, disappointed in humanity. I thought, gosh, people are all mean, so I'm going to be mean too, because that's the only way to get things done. And yeah. when I, was, I think I was about 22 or 23. One of my dear friends, Mary Jo Larai, who has her own programs, and she's incredible, she brought me to Agape. And Reverend mm -hmm. Michael Beckwith, who is an extraordinary teacher, I've been attending that uh, spiritual center for about 15 years now, mm -hmm. he helped me to see that what I speak and what I, how I act in the world actually boomerangs back to me. And then that yeah. evolved for each and every one of us as human beings, Rev Reg, is to lead a hashtag no filters life. What would it be like for us if number one, we could see the filter that I'm seeing the world through? Number two, yeah. what would it be like if we could choose the filter, gratitude, love, prosperity, abundance? And number yeah. three, what would it take to live a life of no filters. Wow. We can all have vulnerability. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. And What's happening, God. What is the reason I'm experiencing this pain? What is the lesson? The moment that happens, poof, the letter, the person, the thing, the pain disappears, just like in my friend's case, because she went internal and talked to the pain. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. And, you know, it's such a powerful expansive experience but at the same time it takes a lot of humility to actually bring yourself to that space where you're accepting that letter that you were saying and you know hold yourself accountable for for whatever that letter is bringing you like you mentioned it can be something that is talking to you about your health or your hardship or whatever loss and you know what now that we're building momentum talking about you know how you're making it work every day in your personal life and your professional life i would have wished that i met you 10 years ago because 10 years ago i was employed and i was working for a bpo of course we had to take in calls constantly and it was also a time in my life where my relationship with my partner was uh, you know, we were going through that transformation where our lesson together was already over. But of course, at that time, I didn't see it that way. <laughs> and at the same time, a lot of the things that you're sharing now, if people here in the Philippines, especially the ones working in BPOs, 
uh, all the tools that you're sharing now is actually very powerful, very effective, especially you mentioned that it it can only take 90 seconds. Did I get it right? Uh-huh. For you, that particular experience and to actually shift. Because I didn't know that you have to actually own it mm-hmm. before you shift. Because one of the things that I decided to do during the lockdown was to take singing lessons. Ah. So I had a voice coach and you know I have this particular favorite song and it actually got me through the whole two months where I had to stay in the apartheid and figure things out while I was trying to deliver necessary work. But what I'm learning from your book now is that I have to allow myself that space emotionally where I have to process it or I'm assuming that if I don't process it emotionally, sooner or later it's going to appear in my life for me to process it. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. Is that if you don't, if you push something away, if you say this letter is not for me, eventually it could be a day later, an hour later, or a year later. That exact same person or situation will come again in a different form. It looks just a little bit different, just enough to confuse you and not think it's the same person or situation. And that's why many of us wind up in the same jobs we dislike, the same relationships where we're unhappy, because we're not actually learning from the experience and saying, oh, what a great opportunity. And um, one of my favorite things that my teacher taught me, one of my teachers, he said that when we say something happens to us, right, we say, oh, this person was gossiping about me or this person was mean to me at the office and was rude and passed me up for a promotion. What my teacher said, which is really funny, if you believe that God is the one and only Jesus, God, whatever you believe in, then what you want to do is you want to say that God was gossiping about me. God (laughs) took my job. God took whatever. Because when you replace it with God, you have to know everything comes to you from God. And so when you replace that a person or a thing God cheated on me. God did this because then you start to laugh about it because you can bring humor and you can shift how you're seeing things. Yeah. And I think that's the power in your book because you have so many anecdotes about your personal life. I <laughs> Stay tuned for the next episode. Only here on Z81 Radio, Manila.